We've made it to Taos, New Mexico on the way to visit Money Robots. Well, they'll be printing the last four layers on the biggest printed building they've ever done with Adobe. And they're using a Tilikum printer. We're going to check that out in a minute. On my way, I booked the most affordable accommodation I could. And it just so happens, I don't think it's coincidence, that this accommodation is made out of Adobe. This is a 10-inch thick Adobe building that me and Dane will be staying in tonight. And tomorrow we'll get to see printed Adobe. The great part about Adobe is it already has the permitting in place so that it doesn't need rebar. Okay, Dan, come on. And so you can print a building in Adobe and as long as it reaches the MPA that this type of Adobe would need, you can have a permitted building in regions that accept Adobe. This is really exciting because it's so hard to get vertical and horizontal tide reinforcement in a printed building. Adobe is super warm, especially compared to a material like concrete that's cold, hard, and has a much higher specific heat transfer, so less insulatory value. Adobe, especially when combined with wood like this, is just really comfortable and earthy. This is a small unit, perfect for the one night that I'm in town. It was 139 after all the taxes and expenses. How cool is this old wooden table and a bunch of these old wooden details in the bathroom? Almost all of the surrounding homes in this region are built with adobe, besides that one being framed out in the back. Some of these may have a stucco finish outside of concrete or even stick built framing, so looks can be deceiving, but this Airbnb at least is made out of adobe, I confirmed with the owner. I made it to the latest Muddy Robots project here in La Florida, and typically this is when I say it's the calm before the storm, but with adobe, it's not quite so hectic. They can stop, pause at any time without cause for concern. And so it's just a lot less pressure than concrete. This is the largest structure they've printed with Adobe to date at this company. And I believe it's the largest single print Adobe structure in the world. The project has a angle, like a corrugation, that makes it a lot stronger than if it was just a straight wall. In a minute, you'll meet the Muddy Robot CEO, Ronald Real, who has an incredible story of growing up on this property, living in Adobe homes for generations, and now completing this project on that very same property. We actually got to meet his mom, who was down the road stacking some lumber. Uh, the material just comes from the land, and so this is the site for excavating where we've done all these tests and experiments. It's just... Um you know, an alluvial soil, with gravel and clay and sand, and very simple. Let's see how we process it. So you've loaded up the material, you pumped a little bit out, got it to buildable consistency, and what's the next step? The next step is that I'm going to position the printer to where I left off. And I can see where I left off, my little Hershey's kissing chocolate over there. And so I'm gonna position it just a little bit behind so I can start the flow and pick up where we left off. Is one point sufficient or do you need to do a dry layer test? Uh, no, it's ready to go. Since it was flowing, I can just start printing right on top of this. Great. Yeah. So this was an experiment that we made last year, which was, um, to see if we can print a roof based on an ancient technology of making parabolic vaults with the robot. And this is the completed structure, which was successful. I think it might be the first on-site 3D printed roof in the world. Um, I did cover it with uh, plaster, just as earth-based plaster, just the first coat just to protect it over the winter. But I didn't, I didn't finish it, so that's a project for next year. But you can see the texture, this beautiful texture at the front that I'm going to keep, and then the vault. So let's come inside. And... There, was a, there was a Vogue photo shoot in here the other day, and they put a, a carpet in here they didn't take out. Yeah. <laughs> So basically it start, started at the bottom and then printed at a 30 degree angle extrusion 
and that 30 degree angle extrusion just built and built and built and slowly closed against that flat wall over there. So cool. I wish it wasn't such a beautiful day. Maybe it was like 100 degrees we could experience uh, I know. the temperature difference. So I'm just showing uh, different types of plaster. This is just an earthen plaster. It was done about 10 years ago. And it's about an inch and a half thick. So it's it's a protective layer. It erodes over, over time. But here you see it uh, 10 years later, still in good shape. Um, you know, this is this is an old house from 1932. Very poor relatives lived here, um, so the the detailing isn't necessarily designed for a lifestyle of not being connected to the house. So when people are connected to the house, they're thinking about the maintenance and plastering. But there's gonna be a lot of details that are designed about thinking about erosion and thinking about the eaves of the roofs. This house was originally actually a flat roof house with a dirt roof. And that roof was put on in the 60s because as they got older, they just couldn't climb on the roof anymore and, and restore the, maintain the roof. This part was done 25 years ago, and I've, I've ignored it a little bit, and I shouldn't, but it's sometimes little carpenter bees come in and they lay, uh, you know, they'll, they'll dig into the wall a little bit and make tiny little holes like this. The problem is that woodpeckers will come and peck them out. So that's an issue, but this is, this is in the last few years, and I, I just need to repair it. But um, it doesn't take much to repair than being in a shovel full of dirt and mud and just reapplying it with the hand. This part was also done 10 years ago, but this gets the most impact of rain. And so you can see what large amounts of rain or snow. So the wind comes in this direction and pounds on this. Um, so you can get a sense. And you've asked me about the annual plastering of the church in, in Taos. And that's because the mixture they use doesn't have enough clay. It's just a lot of sand that just washes away. And so they're not using, in my opinion, the correct mixture for the, for the church. For it to have longevity as an earth plaster. Even with noise cancelling, that generator is pretty loud. So let's do a little voiceover for this section. The print day went pretty smooth, even though Ronald was printing all by himself. Usually he'd have at least one, maybe two other people with him. Uh, in the past, I've seen him printing with two people total, including himself. Today, he was doing just a one-man show, and I was there. Also, Nick was there in attendance. We did a little bit of shoveling, but really not much. And uh, Ronald was able to get the print going. There were... One or two minor hiccups, maybe a piece of gravel got stuck. He flushed out the hose and got back in no time. The Adobe is not really so concerning in terms of you can pause, take lunch, leave it for an hour, overnight, a week. It's not going to damage the equipment. Adobe is really a fascinating process because this is all dirt dug up locally on his property. He processed it by hand. You could argue the material cost is almost zero, just a little bit of diesel for some of his equipment or electricity. And it's a beautiful thing to see such a simple circular process. I've been covering Ronald's progress for years, and this is by far the most advanced I've seen his technology compared to the early videos I did on his property. It's only going to keep improving. And I know with their rebranding from emerging objects to muddy robots, they have big plans for expansion. They need your help too, so if you want to get involved with Adobe, make sure to send your resume in to humanrobotarmy.com and I'll be sure to forward it over to Ronald. He's excited to work with people who are passionate about bringing Adobe to the masses and using this technology to revolutionize the way people live. One of the other really cool aspects of this printer is how easy it is to move from the job site in a minute, we'll see the truck drive away right out of the building. Assembly, disassembly, and transportation is such a critical factor in any type of construction equipment, especially when it's large scale as it usually is. Gantry printers might take one or two days to assemble and the same amount of time to disassemble. If you're hoping to print two or three feet a day for a single story building, this assembly and disassembly process might be half the time of the project. You really don't want to start your construction project with another construction project, so having a system that can just roll up, print, and roll away seems like the way to go. 
you do see a lot of companies, even companies that started with gantry systems, moving towards systems that focus on ease of assembly and disassembly. Another goal concrete printing companies are always chasing is local materials procurement, but that's never as possible with concrete as it is with Adobe. Some piece of the ingredients, whether it's 1%, 30%, 50%, or the old darn mix has to be shipped in from pretty far away. And maybe you're lucky and there's some lime plants within 50 or 100 miles. In a lot of scenarios, people are shipping mixes from other countries. So having a mix you can dig up in your own backyard can be a game changer. And seeing as Adobe is already permitted in the state of Colorado, New Mexico, and some other states, there seems like there's ample room to grow for this technology without worrying about municipal roadblocks. Let's take a look at some of the other Adobe buildings I saw. New Mexico has some of the most beautiful driving I've done in the entire country. Virtually all of the buildings are Adobe, even the commercial buildings where they have restaurants and other kinds of convenience stores. Even the gas stations in this region look like they're made of Adobe to fit in. There's some incredible, really old construction. I love the combination of Adobe and wood. Here are some awesome earth chip buildings that take advantage of the same principles of high heat, specific heat density, uh, and lower specific heat transfer. They say these buildings act as a battery that absorb the heat from the day or absorb the 50 degree ambient temperature under the earth's crust uh, to neutralize the temperature and keep it more comfortable ambiance in either extreme heat or extreme cool conditions, thus potentially lowering the electric bill without relying on traditional R-value insulation. Did you guys enjoy this video as much as I did?